about two and nine here. And I made a post on the community tab uh, a few days ago talking and showing about some of the implications that this administration, the, this current one, uh, that we have is doing to not only places that sell 80% firearms, but firearms themselves. Uh, regular FFL holders uh, that have pretty much like a brick and mortar store or, you know, something of that nature. And there's a question that some people weren't quite clear on because some of the stuff that's in this text that I put up there, that is common. Uh, the, the rules and regulations of holding an FFL and doing things uh, the, the correct way to maintain your, your, your license status. Uh, years ago, I had a sponsor of the channel. Uh, it was um, Second Amendment Arms and Range uh, that used to let me go in there and shoot videos and stuff. Uh, tremendous guy. Paul was a great guy. Unfortunately, they closed not to any kind of government inter interference. It was just lack of production. When Donald Trump came in the office, everybody sat on the couch. Everybody just sat there and did nothing for gun rights until Donald Trump started making some comments that were uh, egregious, uh, which was due process. The reason why I'm not in the left and right paradigm anymore is because of things of this nature. You have to become active and you have to pay attention to politicians. There's a lot of uh, going around about politicians and that will be my next video. Uh, but when this place shut down, I used to talk to Paul and he used to give me some of the ins and outs of owning a gun shop. I wish I would have got that stuff recorded and uh, and put onto a video. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't last long. And during the Trump slump, they had to close the doors. And then there were some health concerns with him and his wife. So it just became overbearing. I wish I would have worked at that store and kept it open and ran it for him. That way we'd have another uh, you know, point of access for firearms for, commu for the community in that uh, neck of the woods and also uh, myself and others uh, that would travel there and use their range and buy firearms and ammunition from them. So the course of what I'm uh, explaining here is your paperwork for an FFL has to be in line. There's a thing called a bound book and that bound book is a bunch of firearms that you should count and make sure they match your bound book. So if you have firearms on your shelf, they should match how many firearms you have in your bound book. All this stuff is pretty general, pretty general. And it's and it's, it's been like that since I've known it and since I've talked to Paul and some of the other people that have owned shops. That's pretty common. Where stuff is starting to get sticky now is paperwork issues. Now, FFLs and, 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 and licensee holders should be checking their paperwork constantly, uh, whether on a weekly or monthly basis, uh, and making sure all the paperwork is in line, the, the correct boxes are checked, there's a signature where a signature needs to be, so on and so forth. Um, and one of the questions were, is this, is this, isn't this already established? It is. But the way the Biden administration, gun grabbers, the, the ATF are doing it is one of the most minuscule things that could be on paperwork will revoke your license. Back in the day, it used to be a fine uh, or they would comment about it and have you fix it uh, there if they were doing an audit. My place of uh, work, uh, corporate does an audit. And so does the manager do an audit. So there's two audits to make sure all the paperwork is in line. A signature needs to be where it needs to be. A date needs to be where it needs to be. And so on and so, so forth box. Now, what, the, what these gun grabbers want to do is they want to shut FFLs down. They want to limit our access as citizens to gain firearms for protection. For whatever you're going to use your firearm for. One of the biggest mistakes people can do is think that this isn't common. It's going to become more common. Uh, we've seen it with places that are getting pinched for 
80% stuff. Uh, a new company just got pinched for it. They're trying to limit access. And one of the ways that they, they can do this is to go and do a, uh, an inspection on, on a federal uh, firearms licensee. That's what they can do. And if they find any, any miscorrelation with your paperwork, they're talking about automatically revoking your license. Now, I watched a guy on a different piece of social media who went, I believe he was from Texas, who went to, it was like an annual, like a monthly annual uh, a meeting for his uh for his business and other businesses around about what the ATF is trying to do, which is limit access to firearms for citizens in any form or fashion. It, over the course of years, we've seen bans do not work. Uh, magazine restrictions don't work. Nothing, nothing works. Criminals are going to do what criminals do to s circumvent the law. They're going to try and get around it anyway, whether it's straw purchasing or just playing out theft to do th their devious deeds that they do in society. Well, this man was talking about uh, there. there's a couple of places in his area that are in question about getting their license revoked for minuscule mistakes of paperwork. I'm talking about maybe, you know, all the paperwork was done correctly, but there wasn't quite a date in a box. That's what I'm talking about. The most insignificant thing that can be corrected they want to pull the license for it. It used to be they give you a fine uh, way back in the day uh, for a company that owned the, the place that I work at now. Uh, I've seen uh, that portion of the, of the company at that time have licenses revoked from certain stores because paperwork was egregious. That was the only time that they would take a license is when paperwork was out of control Serial numbers were wrong. Serial numbers were missed. Uh, you know, their bound book wasn't correct. Uh, those are gigantic mistakes in the FFL world. Uh, but just, you know, forgetting to, to for the, uh, the licensee to put his name on the paperwork. They're talking about that being, uh, from what this gentleman talked about, being a major violation to the point where the government would revoke that shop's license. This is why it's so important to pay attention to your paperwork. If you're going to hold one of these licenses, uh, one of these FFLs, or you're going to have your own shop or you work for one. It is, I can't tell you how, how painstakingly uh, uh, assertive you have to be at this point in time. Sooner or later, something has to be done with the ATF, whether it, whether it be abolished or we put people in there to stop making new positions on firearms and start enforcing what's the rules that are on the books and start actually doing their job instead of, you know, just throwing willy nilly, uh, uh, perception out in there and then claiming it to be some kind of law or some kind of procedural, uh, uh, rewrite of what is already on the books that has to stop. Right now, I don't see it stopping. So I'm really encouraging other places to really go over your paperwork. Uh, this man was talking about some. There's some places in question in in his neck of the woods that quite possibly could get their license revoked for small mistakes, for small mistakes. So that's what I was talking about in my comments uh, because somebody had left one on there and wasn't quite sure what I was talking about. But uh, I have posted that information on there and I, and sometimes I can't get the whole screen capture on there. So I'll have to either do another picture or it just comes out wonky for some reason. I do a lot of this stuff on my phone, but that's what I wanted to relay in the information to you is the Biden administration, the gun grabbers that are in the, in these alphabet agencies, they are really taking strides to limit your access to firearms, whether it's stuff like BDU or JSD supply, or you know, rare breed. They're trying every angle because constitutionally they cannot ban firearms. It's it's the Second Amendment is there, so their chances of you know uh, banning stuff go out the window. But this is another backdoor sort of gun control move is to penalize the rogue gun dealers, and it's not really the rogue gun dealers. 
It's just a gun dealer, whoever it may be, that holds a federal firearms license. It's so important to go over it. Uh, we talk about at lengths at work about having the paperwork. I even tell them to check my paperwork. You know, I've been doing this for a while, but even I can make a mistake. And all it takes is one chance for the ATF to go around my area, start visiting gun shops for a pop-up inspection or some some firearm, uh, uh, you know, get, gets in the hands of the wrong person and then they want to check everything. And I think that's going to be their main goal is to wait for a shop to mess up. Uh, wait for somebody to come in there and straw a gun and then use it in a crime to give them the excuse to look at your paperwork and go through lengths to find something wrong and then pull licenses. It's very important that gun shops have to be on high alert at this point. Whether this will actually come to fruition and licenses will start getting yanked, uh, the the other companies that I've mentioned, these guys are dabbling in in a thin line. Do I agree with what's happening to them? No, but you can only poke the bear for so long. That's why we tell you not to write the ATF, not to call the ATF. That's why that other guy uh, on YouTube shouldn't have been talking about stuff, shouldn't have been mentioning things because the ATF looks at YouTube. The ATF looks at gun channels. The ATF is a machine. It doesn't eat and it has unlimited amount of funds. And it is really hard to beat these, uh, these corrupt organizations. And that's why we have groups like GOA, SAF, or whoever you want to put in that mix. And especially your local, your state and your local uh, gun groups and put them in a position to fight these battles because the government doesn't eat and they do not sleep and they will do anything to limit your capacity to have a firearm, whether it's through what they're doing now with these companies I mentioned or what they are trying to do and trying to set the limitations on uh, for FFL uh, holders. It's very important that you pay attention to this. It's very important that if you own this stuff, uh, a, a business or some kind of business out in your house because you can have one in there that you be a hundred percent of your paperwork. You check it thoroughly. Uh, I even, I even say check it every week or two weeks in advance. Make sure your paperwork is in order because I don't know how this is going to go. Again, I've kind of done a lot of research and trying to look for cases, trying to look for people that had their stuff revoked for minuscule uh, uh, mistakes on paperwork. Uh, again, this is another way that uh, they want to control firearms because they can't do it with banning and they can't do it with confiscation, confiscation and they can't do it by just going around door to door or buyback programs. Nobody's buying into this anymore. So they're finding, they're trying to find different ways to do it. And this is one of the most egregious ways they can do it. Because again, back in the day, they would give you a fine. They'd give you a $1,000 fine or a $500 fine, depending on the infraction. From what I've gotten and talked to a bunch of dealers and a bunch of people that actually had their own business. Now, there's no more fines. They don't want to fine you. They want the most scrupulous thing uh, that you could do on paperwork to become a, a, a revocation of that license. So that's what I was talking about in uh, that uh, community tab. Sometimes I'm just not clear on the community tab. So it's very important for these folks uh, to make sure their house is in order. We try to our best ability. Again, we're human beings. We make mistakes. But see, the government never makes mistakes, right? So they don't have any kind of concerning of them making mistakes. But I like to thank my old and my new my new subscribers and just the people that zip through. I greatly do appreciate it. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to everybody that you watch on social media, including me. And like always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.